Hello, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I am going to do an introduction into how to do free form crochet. This is such a fun form of doing crochet. The possibilities are endless and what it is basically is it's a type of crochet where you don't actually follow a pattern. You learn some techniques and stitches and then you're off. You're just creating as you go. So I'll show you the basics. We're only going to work with basic stitches here. And the tutorial is quite long because it's not the type of thing where I can say, do this stitch pattern and repeat it so many times. I will be showing you how, you're, how to build and increase the stitches to make them nice and tall, and then how to bring them back down again. I'll show you how you'll join on colors in different ways and at the top of stitches, like at the top of a double or treble crochet. And, um, and I do that here. I'll show you how to gauge your tension where you're increasing your stitches in order to have your fabric lay nice and flat. You want a scrumble that's nice and flat. You don't want it curling up because there's too few stitches or it's not all wavy because there's too many stitches. So I show you how to gauge that. And I do have a couple of scrumbles here. These are the first ones that I did and I'll show you some of the mistakes I made with those. And so there's infinite possibilities. You can create all kinds of smaller scrumbles like this and join them together or you can create one big one and just keep going round and round and making it, making it in all sorts of different shapes. And really the possibilities are endless. It's a super fun style of crochet. And I can't wait to show you the basics. Now all you need for freeform crochet is a selection of yarn. It's great to use up odds and ends and you can use any type of yarn you like for this type of crochet. You can use wool, wool blends, you can use synthetic yarn, bamboo, cotton, whatever you like and you just want to use a crochet hook that corresponds to that size yarn. The only thing I would say is that I would use the same weight yarn for your scrumbles. And then you'll need some scissors, a darning needle, some creative imagination, and the willingness to be playful and make mistakes. So let's get started. Now freeform crochet is, is exactly that. Essentially, it's a style of crochet where you're just free forming using a combination of different stitches to create scrumbles. These are called scrumbles. And you can do everything from basic freeform crochet, which I'm teaching you in this tutorial, where we'll just be using single crochets, half double crochets, double crochets, and treble crochets. And you're just working in random patterns. And there's just a few basic skills that you need to learn in order to keep your motifs nice and flat. Now, I first started um, freeform crochet. I first learned about it in this book here. This is a book from the 1970s. It's out of print now. You might be able to find it at a used bookstore or on Amazon from a second seller, something like that. And so this was the first time I had seen freeform crochet and I thought that was pretty cool. And so she gives some basic instructions here in the back of the book on how to do basic scrumbles. And I started with this scrumble here. This was my first one that I ever did and it actually turned out pretty good for a first attempt. This was the second one that I ever did and this is where I started to play with some different stitches, some puff stitches and and doing a little bit more random shape. I didn't quite master this and you can see how the scrumble is a bit wonky and that's because I didn't get my tension correct in really this black row here. And so I'll talk about that a little later on. And then this is a sample I did for this tutorial, but from here I went on to learn more. I don't know if I can get this in this 
in the screen. And I ended up just diving right into it and just playing and learning all different types of fun stitches. There's scallop stitches, bullion stitches, puff and cluster stitches. Um, this is a crab stitch where you're going backwards and it gives sort of a raised texture and you make an actual piece of fabric and then I turned it into a pillow. So there's spirals here. So eventually I'll show how to do some more advanced techniques, but I'll just start with the basics here. And another great resource, if you're interested in this, is the Crochet Workbook. Again, this is out of print, but you can probably find it from a used bookstore or a second seller. And there's all kinds of creative inspiration. She works with a lot of texture, sort of bulky texture, and uh, full kind of stitches and full scrumbles. So essentially what this is, is that you are creating a fabric. And you can do a whole variety of these scrumbles and then sew them together to create a project. Or you can just start with one and build in rounds and build on one motif and just keep building it as you go and make it into one motif. Now the possibilities with these scrumbles are endless because basically anything that you would make with fabric, you can make with freeform crochet. So you can make pillows, purses, you can make clothing, vests, jackets, sweaters, hats, scarves, just whatever your heart desires. Now to begin, you can start with a magic ring if you like. If you know how to do that, I'm not going to teach that here because I want to keep this really, really basic. So start with a slip knot and we're just going to create a small ring with a chain three. Now, if you're new to crochet, I do have my beginner crochet series that teaches you all the basics of crochet and I will link that below. So do a chain three and then create a ring by going into the top loop of the first chain with a slip stitch. Now this is going to be a very tight little ring. And so we're just going to start with a circular shape in the center. And you can do this as a single crochet, a half double crochet or a double crochet. I'll do it as a double crochet. So I will chain three for a double crochet for double crochet. If you're doing a half double crochet, it would be a chain two and a single crochet would be a chain one. So now you're going to do a double crochet into the ring. Now it might be a little bit hard to find the center of the ring. I just sort of let the crochet hook find the center of the ring and it does an amazing job of that. And pull the yarn through and do a double crochet. So all you're going to do is you're going to work double crochets into the center of the ring until you have a nice full circular shape. There's no stitch count here. It's just creating a nice round flat circle and the number of stitches will depend on your yarn choice and your hook choice. So just go ahead and create a circle and I'll see you at the end. All right, so as you come around the circle, what you're looking for is you're wanting to have enough double crochets or single crochets or half double crochets for this to close up nicely. So there's not quite enough stitches there. So I'll do one more. And is still not enough. So if I bring that together, see how that kind of curls up? You don't want that happening. So it needs one more double crochet. So again, no stitch count uh, because it'll depend on your type of yarn and your crochet hooks. So see there, that comes together nicely. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to join your colors on. For this, what we're going to do, we're going to do something called an invisible stitch. So you'll cut your tail, pull this through, 
And I use this invisible stitch a, a lot and just put your darning needle on and I use this where I don't want a knot to at the end of the round. So put your darning needle on and you'll go up into the third chain of your beginning chain three going underneath the two stitches there from the back. And so you're just going to create a mock stitch. So you're pulling that in under the V from the back underneath those two stitches and then you'll bring the needle back down into the stitch that the yarn is coming out, out of and you'll go into the middle of the V stitch down into the back of the motif and you're creating a mock stitch. See just like that and then there's no knot to uh, crochet into. It gives you a nice smooth finish. So you just darn that in and the reason why you want to do a nice neat finish like that is what I discovered when I first started doing the motifs I was crocheting into both stitches so just going under both of them here and this one here actually went back and forth and I didn't like that at all I discovered I like working in the rounds and what I do now is I go under the top loop only and by going under the top loop only you get these nice little ridges all the way around and you don't lose your stitch like in here you can see this a row of single crochet here in the pink it got lost by going into the top loop only you're um, exposing more of the fabric and it also helps for the motif to lay more flat. So here we go. We have a nice little circle for the center of our motif and there's no knots to go into. And you know, here, if you fasten off with a regular knot, you end up with all these knots. And this here was a really bad example that didn't work very well at all. So, so we're joining on a new color so put a slip knot and put that onto your hook and you can join into any stitch but don't join into the mock stitch so going into that top loop only with your new color you can join on with a slip stitch so you just flip your tail over and do a slip stitch and you've joined on your new color so I'm just going to start with a single crochet. So I'll chain one and that'll count as my first single crochet. And now general rule of thumb for your first round is that you need to e increase each round by two stitches in order to get around the first round because it's such a tight circle. And then as you increase, you might do one stitch and two, one and two, and you need to sort of gauge your increases as you go but the general rule of thumb for the first round is you'll need two stitches for every stitch that you have to increase so I did a single crochet in that first stitch and then I'll do a single crochet in this next stitch and I'm going to start building the height of the stitches now so we're going to use single crochets half double crochets double crochets and treble crochets in this entire motif. So I've done a single crochet. So I'm going to start building the height. So I'll do a half double crochet in that same stitch. Then I'll do another half double crochet in the next stitch. And I'll do another half double crochet in that same stitch. And you can build the height wherever you want. Um, and now I'm going to increase to a double crochet. The only thing is, is you want to do the increments gently. So you don't want to go from a single crochet to a double crochet. You want to have those half double crochets in between. So now I'm working these double crochets in, I'm doing two in each stitch. And I'll do another double crochet in this stitch. And now I'm going to build up to a treble crochet. So yarning over twice and again, doing two stitches in each stitch of your beginning circle in order to increase around this initial circle and so that your fabric lays nice and flat. So there I did two trebles in the one stitch. 
Now the higher your stitch gets, the more stitches you'll need to get around the curve. So in this case, I'm actually going to do a third treble in that same stitch because I need that extra stitch to help bring the stitch around the corner. And then I'll do another treble in the next stitch. And then I'll start to bring the height of this down now. So I'll do a double crochet in that same stitch and then a double crochet in the next stitch. And it doesn't matter if you do like a treble and a double in one stitch or two trebles in one stitch or two doubles in one stitch, it doesn't matter. Um, but when you go into trebles, the, the stitch is a little bit taller and more bulky and that's okay, it will flatten out. But this is how you tell that you need to increase. So I'm coming around the corner and my stitch is going off to the right and you want your stitch to stand straight up. So I know that I need another double crochet in that stitch in order to bring the stitch straight up from the motif. So there you go, see that's going straight up. So that's how you can tell if you need to increase your stitches. If they're, if they're going off to the right, you need uh, another one. So now I'm going down to the half double crochets and I'll do another half double crochet in that same stitch and then a half double crochet in the next stitch and I'm going to change the color here so I'll show you how to do that. So I'm actually going to undo this last stitch and I'll show you why. So to join a color on mid row, you'll begin your stitch. So I'll begin the half double crochet, but I'm not going to complete it. I'm going to leave those loops on the hook. And this is the same whether you're doing a double crochet or a single crochet, you don't complete the stitch. You just leave the last um, loops on the hook and then you grab your new color and pull it in through those stitches and complete your stitch just like that. And then you'll have your two little tails here that you'll have to manage and sort of hold on. And the first stitch will be a little bit tricky. And once you darn in your tail ends, that'll be fine. So now I'll carry on and I'll do a half double crochet into the next stitch. There we go, and see how I've joined that on? And I'll do another half double crochet in the next stitch. And then I'm crocheting the tails in as I go. You don't have to do that, but I find that a little bit helpful. And I'll do, and I'll do one more half double crochet into this stitch, and then I'll work down into single crochets. So there I'll do a single crochet. And I'll do another single crochet because I'm still working into that beginning circle. So I'll do a single crochet there. And here's my knot. You don't want to go into the knot. I'll be going into that first stitch there. You, there's the knot and there's the first stitch. And I can see by the distance that I definitely need another single crochet in that stitch so that I comfortably reach into the next stitch. And you're literally going to go into the next round and go into the next stitch and begin going to the next round. You're not going to chain one up or anything like that. You just work in the round, continuing around. So now we're starting into the next round. And for this round, you don't have to increase your stitches as frequently because you can see that stitch is straight up. It's uh, not as sharp of a curve. So here I may do uh, two and then one. So the stitch is going off to the right. So I'll put two single crochets in that stitch. And so now I'm going to start to build some height. So I'll do a half double crochet into the next stitch and I'll do half double crochet into the next stitch because see there's, they were standing up nice, that last stitch. And I'll do 
a half double crochet into the next stitch. So see now that's going off to the right. So I know I need to increase. So I'll do two half double crochets into that stitch. Now I'm going to go up to a double crochet, continuing to build my height here. Oh, got my yarn a bit tangled here. And see, it is curling a little bit. That's in part because of this big stitch here. But when you lay it flat, it should lay flat. And the other thing is, is we use a hand steamer always in freeform crochet because that lays the fabric nice and flat. So this is going off to the right. So I'm going to do another double crochet in that same stitch. And that brings the stitch up nice and straight. Then I'll double crochet into the next one. And then a double crochet into the next one. And that's still going straight up and down. So I can do a double crochet into the next stitch. And there it's starting to pull to the right. So I'll do another double crochet in that same stitch. So that's just sort of a general way to gauge your stitches where you need to increase in order to keep the tension of your fabric nice and flat. So I'm going to crochet up to the edge here and I'll show you something interesting here. We're going to join on in a fun kind of way and I'll do one more here. Okay so now what we have is we have sort of a bit of a straight edge going along here and I'm going to join on a new color and go straight across here. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'll join on with the dark teal. So I'll do one more stitch into the same stitch. So I'll start my double crochet, but I'm not going to complete it. So I just have the two loops on my hook, just the last part of that stitch. And that's where we'll join on the new color. So cut your tail. So just the last pull through of whatever stitch you have is where you'll join on your new color, just like that. And again, it's always a bit tricky to keep your tails tight to begin. So you'll always start with a chain one and now you're going to crochet down along here and you'll crochet into the side of this double crochet post. You don't want to go into the space here because that'll create a gap. You want to actually find stitches in the post itself to work into. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to do single crochets so I'm just picking up a stitch there well it's not really a stitch it's just you know a side of the a stitch and that'll come loose and you just pull that down and I'm just doing a single crochet along here and then I'll go in at the base of that post into the side of it and picking up a stitch and do a single crochet so then now I come down back into the motif I'll do two single crochets. Um, perhaps you'd have to do a half double crochet here. You know, it just, it really depends. And so see, this is curling a little bit, but that's okay. We'll just be, we'll add enough stitches around the next round to flatten it out. So do a single crochet in the next stitch and do a single crochet in the next stitch. And see that staying nice and flat and here I'm going to start to build the height now so I'll do a half double crochet into that same stitch and then a half double crochet into the next stitch and I'm on a nice flat edge here so I'll do a half double crochet into the next stitch and I'm going to start to build my height here. So I'll do a double crochet into that same stitch and then a double crochet into the next stitch. And now we're starting to work around a corner here. So I need to do two double crochets into that same stitch and I'll do two double crochets into the next stitch just as we go around the corner. And now we're working into the green color. 
and you can see how that is working nicely around the edge. So I'm just going to work my way around and I'll come back and show you how it looks. Okay, so you can see where I've worked my way along and I've been doing double crochets and I did one, one, two, one, one, one. And here I'm making some trebles here. And now I want to do that same thing where I cut across here with a new color. So I'm not so worried about making it around the corner here. I'm going to join on a new color sort of into a straight edge. So I'll do another treble crochet into the next stitch. And again, always working into the top loop. And I'm going to join my next color on into this treble. So I've just left the last pull through of this treble, cut my yarn and bring in the new color into that last stitch of the treble. And again, you're always sort of fussing with these tails and tuck them in. And once you join on your new color, you always do a chain one. And in this case, as you work down the treble crochet post, you'll have to do three stitches. So you go into the side of the post here, just picking up a, a stitch there as best as you can find it. And then finding a place to go into in the middle here. And I actually have two strands of yarn from the side of that post. And I'm doing a single crochet and then into the base of the post, I was able to get two strands there as well and do a single crochet. And now I'm going into the green. And see, see how that's a bit of a drop there? So you need a longer stitch there. So I'll do at least a half double crochet there. You could do a double crochet and yeah, and that worked quite well. A double crochet would have worked as well. And so now I'm just going to carry on with half double crochets and I'll do one into the next stitch before I increase. And I'm not actually having to increase here. I can just keep going along this edge because it's more of a straight edge, but I'm gonna start to build the stitch. I'll make that a double crochet and I'll do a double crochet in the next one. And this is a fairly straight edge that I'm working along here. So I'm not increasing, but I am building the height of them. And I'll do another one here. And in this case, I'll do another double crochet in that same stitch because it was going off to the right a little bit. And so you'll carry on and build around here with any combination of stitches that you like. You could just work your way around. So I'll go and do that and just do it intuitively and I'll come back and show you what I've done. All right, so I just continued working around, just increasing and decreasing as I went around and I'm going to join on a new color here. And also I know this is looking a little bit like an eye. So I'm going to see if I can change the shape a little bit, maybe along this edge here. So I'm going to add a new color. So begin the single crochet and just cut your tail and bring in a new color here. I'm gonna bring the green back in. And again, you're just joining the new color on for your last part of the stitch. Whichever stitch you decide to join into, it can be a single crochet, half double crochet, double or treble. And again, just bring those tails to the back and then just carry on with your stitches. So there's the single crochet. And as you're, you get more rounds, you're not going to have to increase your stitches as frequently. But of course you can build and bring your stitches down as frequently as you like to get different shapes. So I'm gonna start building here. So I'll go to a half double crochet and and again, you're always doing these increments one stitch at a time. So a single to a half double to a double to a treble and then back down again. You never wanna jump say from a single to a double. 
And so we're coming around a corner here and you can see that stitch is pulling to the right. So I'll do two stitches in that same stitch and I'll keep working around and come back and show you how I'm making out. Okay, so you can see here how I built this corner up and then made it more into a square, which helped to take the eye shape away. So I did doubles and trebles and, and half double crochets and then I went into single crochets around the corner and so you could carry on building on this as much as you want going into different directions and different heights of stitches and different colors of yarn and just be playful so I will show you how we'll fasten this off once you get the scrumble to the point where you want to fasten off rather than doing a chain one to fasten off or fasten off just like this you you want to sort of tuck your stitch in behind in it in a certain way so put your darning needle on and you want to come down into the back of your scrumble and bring the yarn over to the left and and sort of bring this the yarn over to the left into the back and sort of lay that stitch sort of over to the left like that and there we go and then see how that blends nicely together there like that and then of course you have all your tail ends to darn in which is a little bit of work but I actually don't mind that but there you go and of course you want to use a steam iron to press that nice and flat and you can see here how you can start to build your scrumble and eventually join them together using a sewing technique. So that's a very basic scrumble using this single crochet, half double, double and treble crochets. Be playful, just have some fun with it. And I am going to share some more tutorials with some more advanced techniques. So make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and please give this a thumbs up and we'll see you next time.